Hello, I'm David Bonert, ruminant nutritionist and extension beef cattle specialist with Oregon State University and the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center, and I'm here to present an Eastern Oregon Ag Minute. I think that most of us have heard the phrase, when you're handed lemons, make lemonade. Such is the case with the wake-up call for cattle producers when the rapidly growing ethanol industry revealed its hunger for corn. Corn prices in many parts of the country are twice as high today as they were a year ago. This was partly responsible for the reduction in calf prices we saw during the last quarter of 06. So, how can we make lemonade out of this? The answer is by using the byproducts of ethanol production, such as distiller's dried grains, which are becoming increasingly available and are usually an extremely cost-effective feed ingredient. For the remainder of the week, I will be discussing how ethanol is made from corn, the nutritional value of ethanol co-products, and what cattle producers can expect if ethanol production continues to increase as many experts suggest. This week I am talking about the current and future ethanol industry and how it will affect cattle producers. The ethanol industry in the U.S. is expanding rapidly because the production of ethanol from corn has become a strategy to reduce our reliance on foreign oil. There are currently two types of milling processes used to produce ethanol. They are wet and dry milling, with the majority of ethanol resulting from dry milling. The dry milling process is relatively simple. Corn or another source of starch is ground, fermented, and the starch converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide, with about one-third of the dry matter remaining as byproduct. Quantitatively, dry milling 100 pounds of corn will result in approximately 4.8 gallons of ethanol, 32 pounds of distiller's dried grains, and 32 pounds of carbon dioxide. The distiller's dried grain is a good supplemental feed for cattle. Today I am going to talk about the projected future of ethanol production and its effects on corn supplies and prices. Ethanol production has surged nationwide. Currently there are over 100 f refineries now producing approximately 5.4 billion gallons of ethanol a year, with dozens of ethanol plants under construction that will be online in the next few years. The Energy Policy Act of 2005 set an annual target of 7.5 billion gallons of ethanol production by 2012, which is very attainable, probably by 2008. However, this takes a lot of corn. Increased demand is already straining supplies and pushing corn prices higher. For example, in four of the past five years, corn usage has been greater than production. This is decreased corn on hand which has resulted in the high prices we are now seeing. Also, it has raised production costs for feedlots and lowered calf prices. This is expected to continue into the near future with the amount of corn used for ethanol to double by 2008. Consequently, there should be an abundance of affordable, high-quality distiller's grains available for use by our nation's cattle producers. Today, I'm going to talk about the nutritional quality of and feeding recommendations for Distiller's Dried Grains, a co-product of ethanol production. Distiller's grains normally contain from 30 to 35 percent crude protein and 10 to 12 percent fat. Also, research has shown that dried distiller's grains can contain 20 percent more available energy than dry rolled corn. However, it can have high levels of phosphorus and sulfur. The increased phosphorus is normally a benefit to cow-calf producers because most pasture or hay-fed cattle are at least marginally deficient in phosphorus. In contrast, the potentially high sulfur content can affect copper status and potentially cause polio in beef cattle if proper, proper nutritional management is not followed. Research has shown that beef cattle can be successfully fed as much as 40% of their diet as distiller's grains. However, current recommendations for forage-based diets are to not feed over 5 or 6 pounds per day to mature beef cows. For backgrounding or growing diets, calves can be fed up to 20% of the diet, roughly 3 to 5 pounds, as distiller's grains. Distiller's grains can be an economical and effective protein and energy supplement for cattle producers. Feel free to give me a call at the experiment station if you have any questions about feeding distiller's grains. This week I have been talking about ethanol production and how it is affecting cattle producers. I want to conclude today with a brief overview of what I've covered this week. The ethanol industry in the United States is expanding rapidly because the production of ethanol from corn 
has become a strategy to reduce our reliance on foreign oil. However, this takes a lot of corn. Increased demand is already straining supplies and pushing corn prices higher. This has decreased the U.S. corn inventory, which has caused the high prices we are now seeing. Also, it has raised production costs for feedlots and lowered calf prices. This is expected to continue into the near future with the amount of corn used for ethanol to double by 2008. Consequently, there should be an abundance of affordable, high-quality distiller's grains available for use by our nation's cattle producers. Distiller's grains normally contain from 30 to 35 percent crude protein and 10 to 12 percent fat. Current recommendations for forage-based diets are to limit the amount of distiller's grains to 5 or 6 pounds per day to mature beef cows. For backgrounding or growing diets, calves can be fed up to 20 percent of the diet as distiller's grains. Distiller's grains can be an economical and effective protein and energy supplement for cattle producers. Feel free to give me a call at the experiment station if you have any questions. I'm David Boner. Thanks for listening.